Welcome to Northwood Temple Academy. My name is Renee McLam and I'm head of school. We are delighted that you could join us tonight for our admissions coffee. Normally, we would invite you to our campus for coffee and donuts, but due to COVID-19, we have invited you to join us from the comfort of your homes while we share with you what we believe to be the very best education you can give your children. You know, many organizations have a mission statement, and that mission statement is defined as a summary of why that company exists, the purpose of that company. Often it becomes just words on a plaque that they put in the front um, of the office. But at Northwood Temple Academy, we take our mission statement very seriously. In fact, the words drive us with such conviction that they direct every program, every activity held on our campus. I wanted you to just listen to what our statement says. Northwood Temple Academy is committed to providing a Christ-centered education that promotes excellence in teaching and learning, focusing on high academic standards, excellence in fine arts, emotional well-being, and physical strength. We are nurturing today's children and developing tomorrow's kingdom leaders. Tonight, I'm gonna to introduce to you our administrative team and they will share with you how these foundational statements shape our educational outcomes for get grades K through 12. First, you'll hear from Mrs. Janet Wright. She is our K through eight principal, and she will talk about the elementary and middle school program. She will be followed tonight by Mrs. Stephanie Marsh, our middle school dean of students. Following her will be Mrs. Ann Warren. She's our high school principal and also director of our student services. Then I will come back and wrap up our evening by explaining the difference a Christ-centered education will make in the life of your child and your family. Mrs. Wright? Thank you, Mrs. McClam. It is great to be with you tonight. I am Mrs. Janet Wright. I am the elementary and middle school principal, and I am so honored to be here to tell you some cool things that we are doing and just how our school here at Northwood stands out in the elementary department and in the middle school department. Let's first talk about our high academics. First of all, we're very careful to make sure we have small class size. Usually between 15 and 19 students are in the class. We have faith-based textbooks. We wanna make sure that what our students are learning are based on the Word of God. All the academics are strong, everything is um, followed as far as a curriculum map and we stay with our scope and sequence, but we make sure that the Word of God is brought into every single subject. We have high standardized test scores, which prove and validate uh, the strengths of our academic program and show that the teachers are working hard with the students daily. I'm also excited that we have a program called Accelerated Reading where we give a STAR test so we can determine the level that our children are reading in and try to help them grow in that. And it also helps our students as they read to increase their comprehension skills. Some other exciting parts of our elementary school is our theater arts program. We so much enjoy seeing our students at Christmas and in the springtime present amazing musicals. We're talking over 150 students with speaking parts, solos, duets, trios, costuming, microphones, lighting. We're so blessed to be able to use the large facility of our church at Northwood Temple. So we're really excited that we have a, a huge theater arts program, which moves up even into the high school where we've done plays and even our own movies that we've made in high school. Another exciting part are our band classes. We are so blessed to be able to start a band in the fifth grade. So our students are able to choose an instrument and work with our band director. We also have received superior ratings and every time we go to a competition, they look and say, wow, I can tell that you are working to give God the glory for what your school is doing in your band program. We're able to give beautiful concerts Christmas and springtime and we were even blessed to give concerts at the Cape Fair Botanical Garden. We are so blessed to have Mrs. Bernal as our Spanish teacher. The children love this class, singing, um, speaking the language. In every level that they go to Spanish class, Mrs. Bernal makes it very, very special. So by the end of fifth grade, your children are able to speak really well for in their Spanish classes and even 
translate, and it's just very exciting to see our students as they grow and mature in their Spanish classes. We offer other we re weekly resources. We have computer class, music class, library, and physical education. We are super excited that each week our school offers weekly chapel programs. In these chapel programs, we have different speakers come in, and we also have the students participate and use their gifts for the Lord in chapel. They're able to stand up on the stage and do speaking parts and sing songs and really participate and show their love of the Lord. We're very careful to make sure each grade is participating in missions product, projects, field trips, daily recess. We offer hot meals in our cafeteria and we have tutoring after school where the teachers can meet with the students for no extra charge. We also have wonderful child care. Your students, if they need to, they can come to before school care and they can stay after school till 6 p.m. We offer art club, bricks for kids where they build beautiful Lego projects. We have a spelling bee for all the elementary students and math Olympics. Let's talk a little bit about our middle school. The middle school also focuses on high academic standards. We also try to keep our class sizes smaller, anywhere between 16 and 22 students. We have faith-based textbooks that also bring in the Word of God and help them to see a biblical worldview in every subject that they study. We have high standardized test scores, which also show that the students have worked hard and prove and validate that our teachers are working diligently in the classroom with these students. We also offer tutoring after school, and each middle school teacher has special days that they stay after school where they can work with their students. In middle school, we offer band. Of course, again, we have a sixth grade band and a seventh and eighth grade band. For those that really excel in art, we offer art festival, we have opportunities for students to do drama and speech in our speech meet. We offer math Olympics, computer and keyboarding, creative writing, Spanish, and our librarian even offers a book club. One of the things that really helps us that where we are a little bit more distinguished from some of the other schools and we're able to offer chapels every week. So each week we have a separate middle school chapel and a separate high school chapel. And so the students are able to come together and worship the Lord to praise Him with all of their hearts. And they are participating. They're playing their instruments and they're leading in worship. And then we also offer the quiet times of reflection at the end of our chapel services. We are excited that Northwood Temple Academy has an amazing sports program. So we're able to offer so many different areas where your child can work out in the afternoon and show their gifts. We offer track, cross country, soccer, basketball, volleyball, baseball, softball, golf, and cheerleading. So I'm so glad that you had a chance to join us today. And so I've really looked forward to um, speaking with all of the new parents and the new families. So please call us. I would love to meet you, and I would be so honored to spend some time with you. Thank you so much. To some, this is just a classroom. To us, it's a launching pad. We're putting students in contact with the best educators and the best technology. But we're not just teaching them science and literature. We're teaching them integrity and character. We're not just preparing this generation for higher learning and a successful career. We're preparing them to live a life worthy of their calling. This isn't class as usual. We're busy earning top academic scores and winning state championships. We're not only training students for 12 years, but preparing them for 10,000 years. We are not only defined by what happens inside these four walls, but by what our graduates take out to the world. We're building a stronger foundation for the next generation. A foundation for a better education. A foundation for a better career. And a foundation 
for a better life. We're tired of the status quo, so we're breaking the mold. We're Northwood Temple Academy, so the next generation may know. Good afternoon. My name is Stephanie Marsh, and I've had the privilege of being at Northwood Temple Academy for 13 years. During my time at Northwood, I've held such positions as a first grade teacher, gospel choir director, middle school Bible teacher, and also the middle school dean of students. I'd first like to talk to you about the elementary choir. If you have an elementary student that loves to praise God in song, I encourage you to consider the gospel choir. NTA Gospel Choir is made up of elementary students who share a desire to worship God through song. Ranging from grades first through fifth, these students have ex expanded their ministry to include singing at Northwood Temple Church, various events and chapels on campus, nursing facilities, VA facilities, and also children's homes. The Gospel Choir provides children an opportunity to serve God and their school by ministering through song. I believe that when children sing scriptures, they remember for a lifetime those songs. Reflecting on the message of the song as they sing will instill in each of them an understanding of the spiritual truth and the knowledge of God. These children are a part of an education process about learning God's word through music, and we are so proud of the ministry that they provide, not only for the school, but also for our community. So if you're considering NTA and want to get your child or children involved in an extracurricular activity that involves music and vocals, I hope that you would consider Northwood Temple Gospel Choir for next year. I'm also the middle school Bible teacher, and I want to highlight the Bible classes here at NTA because our teachers from preschool all the way to 12th grade have a passion because they realize that it is our calling to ensure that all our students are actively engaged in God's word every day. One of my primary focuses in Bible class is outreach, and I've been blessed with the opportunity to take our students into the community to serve in a variety of organizations to include the Agape Pregnancy Support Center, Raven Outreach, and Aaron's Hope, just to name a few. You see, here at NTA, we value the importance of a Christ-centered education, and we take pride in training kingdom leaders. Last, I'm honored to be a part of the administrative team here at Northwood, where I serve as the middle school dean of students. As Dean of Students, I assist Mrs. Wright with a variety of tasks to include the monitoring of positive behavior expectations and communicating the NTA Honor Code with all of our students. I'm also rep responsible for building a positive student culture while assisting with the students' spiritual, social, and emotional development. So if you have an elementary student who loves to sing, or a middle school student who desires to be taught the Word of God in a loving and nurturing environment, I invite you to come see what Northwood Temple Academy has to offer. And I assure you, this is indeed a place like none other. Thank you and God bless. My name is Wendy and I am an NTA faculty member and I'm also an NTA parent and I began as a parent first. This began, oh, about 10 years ago. My son was in second grade and he was struggling and we knew that we needed to do something a little bit different. And when we started looking at Christian schools, I really didn't think that it was feasible. I really didn't think we could do it, but we knew that we had to make a decision that was gonna benefit my son. We moved my son and immediately saw crazy changes. His second grade teacher, I think about her every day. I pray about her, I thank her, and she took my child from day one and loved him <laughs> as he was her own. 
He came in there lacking confidence. He struggled academically and he was crazy smart. He was a good kid, but he just didn't have the environment where he felt warm, where he felt that he could succeed. He walked into her classroom and it changed. The person that he was changed. She sat down and took a student that was average and she worked with him and he excelled. He was challenged. He had friends immediately that welcomed him into the classroom and it was important as a military family for a child that changes school a lot for him to feel comfortable. He excelled immediately because of the elementary program. It was academically rigorous for second grade. We saw him grow and he blossomed as a second grade student. We were here for two years as a military family and then the military moved us. We spent six years away and then we came back. And when we came back, we thought, you know, do we want to look at other schools? It's, it's been a while. Is Northwood still going to work for us? And we started school shopping. Long story short, we came back to Northwood for several reasons, for the reasons we were here before. But we came back because when we came into an interview, my sons, both of my children at that point, sat down with an administrator and they talked to my son for hours. We were here just trying to see, you know, what Northwood was all about um, because we'd been gone for a while. And they sat and talked to them and shared, wanted to know who he was um, and how he could fit into Northwood. And really just immediately they felt the bond. The teachers in elementary, in middle, and high school know my children. They love my children. They are part of their daily prayers. I know, I know my children are in the prayers of their teachers and I know they push them um, and they really want them to succeed. They want them to be leaders. They want them to serve as they step outside of Northwood and, and they begin the next chapter, not only on the middle school side, but when they were in elementary and then also now in high school, they're really partners. And I truly feel that these teachers are, are battle buddies to myself and my husband as we try to parent in this, in this century as things are so challenging right now. That's what a school should do. That, that's, that's who we are and how we are different. Good evening. I'm Ann Warren. I'm the high school principal of Northwood Temple Academy and the director of student services. But more importantly, I'm the mom of six kids. And we've graduated five from Northwood Temple Academy. And I have one left in high school. And I'm very proud of all of my kids, those at home and those here at Northwood Temple Academy. Thank you for joining us tonight. As you've heard from Mrs. McClam, we have a mission statement here at Northwood that we focus upon when we make our decisions about what to do with our children and the avenue that we want to take going forward. We practice excellence in teaching and learning to develop, to develop tomorrow's kingdom leaders today. And we focus on four areas, high academic standards, excellence in fine arts, emotional well-being, and physical strength. Focusing on high academic standards, we have small class sizes, we have a modified block schedule, and we have dedicated faculty that pray daily over our students. We also have two academic tracks. One is college preparatory and the other is a general education track. We also offer AP level courses along with our core courses of English, Math, History, Science, and Bible and we offer a, a variety of challenging electives. Fortunately, and um, we're blessed to have a program with FTCC for early college, and we have students who have selected a college pathway with an Associates of Arts, Science, and Engineering, and we also have students who have chosen a pathway with Career and Technology. We offer academic assessment of our students through the SAT and PSAT. We're very fortunate because we offer 9th and 10th the PSAT in October during the school day and the 11th and 12th grade have the SAT taken here on our campus. We found that this is easier for our parents and it's also more comforting to our students to be in an environment where they're very comfortable to take this important test. We also offer the Terra Nova testing for our end of year testing but 
Next year, we're going to offer it in the beginning as well, because with the pandemic, we want to have a starting point for our students to measure their growth for the next year. We also have other opportunities for growth for our students. We have a very active student government. We have a national beta club, which is an honor society that promotes academic excellence, character, leadership, and service. And upcoming in the next year, we also are going to charter the Mu Alpha Theta, which is a mathematics honor society, the Spanish club, and a Korean club. We have excellence in fine arts. As Mrs. Wright mentioned earlier, we have an award-winning band program. We participate in an art festival through ACSI, a creative writing festival, speech meet, meets, math challenges, and other opportunities to become involved with drama and music. We also practice well-being for our students. We have weekly chapels. We offer a program called Man Up, to our young men and pillow talk to the ladies. We also have weekly Bible studies and prayer times. We also promote individual community service work and also group mission opportunities. We participated in Harvest Train with the Falcons Children's Home, Royal Home Ministries, pouring into Puerto Rico because of the earthquakes, pet shelters, and other opportunities where we can serve the Lord and our community. We have individual activities, but we also have activities with the classes. We found that this is an opportunity for growth and community. Often classes will meet together for lunch and they work together for special projects like prom, grandparents day, valograms, and adopt a class. Our final and fourth uh, item that we stress in our mission statement is physical strength. Mrs. Wright stated some of our activities that we invite our students to become involved in, such as our athletic program. We do have volleyball, we do have baseball, um, soccer, cheerleading, a lot of sports. And we have quite a number of our students who have gone on to play ball in college. This year, our gradu graduating class, 20% of our students will play ball for a college. We've got students in NC State right now, Louisville, Federal State, and others. But what really matters is the outcome, the fruit. And our students, about 95% of this class, this graduating class, will go on to college. But we do have alumni currently attending West Point, NC State, uh, we mentioned Louisville and Campbell and Methodist, and we have had students at UNC and throughout colleges and universities throughout the world. We also have students who are serving proudly in the United States military, and we have some that have gone on with vocational training and opened their own businesses or have become part of the city council. But more importantly, more than anything else, is our spiritual outcome. Northwood Temple Academy provides a safe haven for your child, and we want them to grow into mature adults, but more importantly, men and women who could boldly articulate their stance for the Lord. And in God's word, it says that we're to be his witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we have alumni, I'm proud to say, in Fayetteville, in North Carolina, throughout the United States, in Europe, in Central America, in Africa, and in Asia. And I'm proud of each and every one of them. So I invite you tonight to join us here at Northwood Temple Academy. Give us a call, we'd love to speak with you and share with you what a special place this is. We all know that children are a gift from God, even teenagers. And it's not easy to raise a child in this world. As a matter of fact, it's pretty scary. But you are not alone. We would like to join with you in partnership and help your child find his special place in the Lord's work. We're in this together. Thank you. To some, this is just a classroom. To us, it's a launching pad. 
we're putting students in contact with the best educators and the best technology. But we're not just teaching them science and literature. We're teaching them integrity and character. We're not just preparing this generation for higher learning and a successful career. We're preparing them to live a life worthy of their calling. This isn't class as usual. We're busy earning top academic scores and winning state championships. We're not only training students for 12 years, but preparing them for 10,000 years. We are not only defined by what happens inside these four walls, but by what our graduates take out to the world. We're building a stronger foundation for the next generation. A foundation for a better education. A foundation for a better career. And a foundation for a better life. We're tired of the status quo. So we're breaking the mold. We're Northwood Temple Academy. So the next generation may know. Hope you've enjoyed hearing about all the programs at Northwood Temple Academy and believe me that was not an exhaustive list tonight but I get the opportunity of pulling the pieces together what does it mean when a school says we offer a Christ-centered education what makes that kind of education different than the school up the street we believe that it makes all the difference in the world listen your child will sit in school for 16 thousand hours from the time they're in kindergarten to the time they graduate. That is a lot of hours to be sitting under the instruction of someone. It's very important that you know that someone and what they believe that's standing before your children. Because see, your children during those 16,000 hours, when they come to the end, they're going to graduate with at least two things. One, they're going to graduate with a diploma. That diploma will help them get a job or help them get into college somewhere. But number two, that diploma, that end of that 16,000 hours, your child will have a worldview, a way of thinking about all of life. And listen to what a difference it makes. Listen, that worldview will shape every decision he or she makes for the next 20, 30, 40, and 50 years. Decisions about who they'll marry, decisions about politics, decisions about children and family, decisions about their business or their possessions. Every action your child will take will arise and conform to the worldview formed during those 16,000 hours in school. I just want to give you a little picture of what that might look like. I love what G.K. Chesterton, a famous philosopher and theologian, said. He said, education is not a subject, nor does it deal in just subjects. It is instead a transfer of a way of life. And what I want you to think about for just a minute, that way of life, that way of thinking. Everybody that graduates from school somewhere, from every politician, they have developed a way of thinking about all of life, about the world. I wanna to try to give you a quick picture of what it means when we say Christ-centered. Everyone has a worldview. Education is never neutral. Worldview, a way we perceive the world and everything in it. This Christ-centered worldview. Listen, we believe that ideas, what is school all about? Ideas, the presentation of ideas from the teacher. And ideas, we believe, have consequences. We believe that, let's, well, let's just listen to a couple of, it, um, of people down through history who have stated the control of education. What about Dr. Jane Dobson? Most of you are familiar with him. He was the president for Focus on the Family for years. He's a child psychologist. He says this, those who control what young people are taught and what they experience and what they see, what they hear, think and believe will determine the future course of the nation. What about Abraham Lincoln? He said the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. 
Listen, we don't have to look far at the condition our government in, as the condition our culture in, is to realize that we've had generations of children sitting under thinking that did not line up with God's word. A few years ago, um, we could uh, apply for, schools can apply for Title II funds. And Title II funds will help you um, with your teacher development. A few years ago, this little phrase popped up on the form. It said private faith-based schools are eligible to apply for Title II funds from the state. And, but this is the statement that appeared. I want you to listen carefully to it. Services provided by Title II will be secular, neutral, and non-ideological. I want you just to stop and pause and think about that for a minute. It is impossible to teach non-ideological everyone's going to have their ideas, going to have their ways of thinking. Education, again, we believe is never neutral. Let's think about some of the things that our children are facing right now in school. Transgendered, where children are taught that they can become whoever or whatever they want to. I want you to zoom in on that as a way of thinking, and I'll pull that together in a minute. What about polyamory? Maybe you're sitting there thinking, what is polyamory? And if you don't know what it is, you haven't been in our local middle schools lately. Polyamory are relationships between more than two people. So a boy could have a relationship with two girls or the girl could have a relationship with two boys. Very prevalent in the lives of our children today. I love what Josh McDowell said. While we need to fear what our kids could be tempted to do, we need to be more concerned with what our kids are led to believe. Let's think about it in this light. Again, I remind you, ideas always have consequences. When we start with this premise, when I look at this picture, when you see this picture of the vast universe, we have a way of thinking, either one of two ways. We can look at this vast picture of the universe and we can say, oh, it happened by accident. Just by random billions of years, our universe appeared with a big bang. Or we can look at this vast, beautiful, complex universe and we can begin with, in the beginning, God created. I tell you tonight that when you begin with the premise of in the beginning, God, it changes everything. Every subject your, your child is taught in school will begin with either one or two foundations, in the beginning God or no God, and it has great consequences. This will put it in perspective for you. When you look at these three pictures, a picture of a baboon, a picture of grains of sand, and then finally a picture of a child, I want you to listen to this statement. And this statement was made by a Supreme Court Justice in 1927. So this thinking has just not popped up overnight. He said, I see no reason for attributing to a man a significant difference in kind from that which belongs to a baboon or to a grain of sand. How sad is that? How depressing is that? That a child might be brought up to believe that they have no more value than that of the grains of sand or no more value than that of a baboon. Because see, if you begin your thinking with the premise that there is no God, no in the beginning God created, then you're left with this other worldview that says this about man. Man is a result of a purposeless and natural process that did not have him in mind. He was not planned, he is a state of matter, a sort of animal. So if your child is taught from that foundation, then no, they can find no more value than the grains of sand of a baboon. But listen to the difference when we begin with the foundation in the beginning God. When we begin with that premise, listen to what God's word says about our children, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that they are created in the image of God, that they are special and that they are created with purpose to fulfill. What a difference than believing that you were born with no purpose, just a state of matter or an animal. Can you see the vast difference Then there is no God and in the beginning God? That foundation, that worldview shapes the way your children think. We can carry it and it gets even bigger. 
When we look at this picture, how can some look at this picture and say, well, this is a blob of tissue. It has no value at all. But see, if you begin with in the beginning God, if you begin with a Christ-centered education, you look at that picture and you know that that's life. You know that that is a baby created in the very image of God. Can you see the vast chasm between these two worldviews? Can you see if a child is taught all of their life from kindergarten on up that they are a part of this purposeless, random world created with no purpose, that that would start their foundation? Of, why do you think we have so many teenage suicides where our children are so depressed? Because when you're brought up with there in the beginning, no God, it greatly impacts the way your child even thinks about themselves. How precious it is when we look at our child and we realize that they understand that their intrinsic value is not built on what the world says or by what that Vogue magazine says, but because they're created in the image of God, that gives them immediate value. And we've seen the difference of that on the campus of Northwood Temple Academy. And when we say that we're nurturing and we care about their well-being, we care enough to begin to stop and talk about some of these things in our culture that impact their world. At the bottom of this slide, you can see a group of our students um, where we attend every year the March for Life in Washington, D.C. Because you see, we want your children to understand that life is precious. Life is valuable and they have intrinsic worth that they find in Jesus Christ. When we're left with 16,000 hours to develop those thoughts. Now, it's crazy. I want you to look at this slide. I put it here purposely because you might think, well, nobody believes that they're a Martian. Well, yes. Last year in the newspaper, there was an article where a man truly felt that he was a Martian and he wanted to know where he was going to use the bathroom. Evidently, he sat under someone's thinking that helped shape his thoughts. The power of thoughts, and I end with this, 16,000 hours, your children are going to sit in a desk. Their souls, their minds, their thoughts are going to be shaped by that person and that worldview standing in front of them. They're going to have to answer these big questions. What is my purpose in life? This other worldview says you have no purpose except that which you make it. God says you were born with purpose. What about the next big question of life? Who makes the rules? Is it God or man? When we look around our culture right now, it looks like man is making the rules. But we want to shape your child's thoughts to realize that God has a plan. God has some rules. And those rules will help direct their lives and help and make all decisions. What is right and wrong? Right now, that's very blurry in our culture, and our children are very confused. It is our, one of the things that Ms. Marsh does as middle school dean of students is she gets to take the time to sit down with a child and to talk deeply about what is right, what is wrong, how do we know what's right and wrong? Big questions for our children. What about the question of what happens after death? Or even, who am I? These are questions that your children deal with on a daily basis. And those answers are going to be formed from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. I end with this frame because I love this is um, a picture of one of our graduations in the past. And you see in this picture our faculty surrounding our seniors. We take it very seriously um, the prayer for calling out these kids. We take it very seriously, the power that a teacher has to shape the thoughts and the heart of a young person. We end our year by circling them and having one last prayer before we send them out. It is our prayer that they leave this campus beginning all of the foundation, all of their decisions about life that in the beginning, God. I hope in this short time I've been able to put a picture of the difference of a Christ-centered education. The difference it makes in the life of a child when you can begin all the foundation of life with, in the beginning, God. 
Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope this has been a meaningful time and I hope it has caused you to think about who is standing in front of my child. Luke 640 says that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. Do you know your child's teacher? Do you know what they think? Do you know what worldview they base all of their decisions? If you were to choose a Christ-centered education, you would know from the very beginning that that teacher sitting in front of that child loves the Lord, has a relationship with the Lord, and therefore their worldview is going to line up with the Word of God. And that's going to be important in the shaping of that little soul and that little life. We love our mission statement that says nurture. We spend a lot of time nurturing on this campus. And we would like the opportunity to nurture your child. We like that you've asked some questions tonight. If you have more questions about Northwood Temple Academy, you can call our office and speak to someone at any time. Right now, we cannot give tours of our campus because of COVID-19. But if you will check our website, ntaeagles.org, you will find a virtual tour. Um, and that will give you a, just a short tour. We'd be glad to Zoom with you to answer any questions. Check our Facebook page. Check our Instagram. You can connect with us through any of this social media. We've enjoyed coming into your homes tonight, and we look forward to meeting you and your children for the 2020-2021 school year. Thank you.